on raining, I, I heard yesterday that 23 days straight, raining and raining and raining. And uh, you can see I got some beautiful views as I, me and my coworker decided Thursday, which is my last day in the week, we went to the rooftop of the Mangu Aquarium and then uh, we take some pictures on the top. Actually, I forgot as I'm going down, you see the beautiful rainbow in just in that uh, inlet, Burard, they call it Burard Inlet. As you overlook North Vancouver, it's so beautiful. But I already went down and I tried to run, but I, I have still a little bit got the rainbow. It means that rain is over for a while. Today I'm going to speak, brothers and sisters, about judgment. It's my desire to share to you this one. It's because, um, because I love you so much, all of you, and it's my desire to understand what does this mean. It's a Valentine's Day, so this is my message to you guys. Heart to heart. Last uh, Sabbath, Pastor and I do uh, speak about the, phases, the four phases of love. But today, I speak to you about this one because... It concerns us all as we uh, think about our lives today. Where are we now? Where are we? Ready or not? Judgment day is coming. You know, it's still ring to my mind when I'm in high school. Especially third year, fourth year, I'm not taking seriously now my schooling. I'm working at that time in Northern Foods Corporation. While I'm in high school, I'm working now, so uh, no, I'm not taking seriously going to school. And every time I caught in the act, when the teacher's coming and we're chatting and talking and very noisy, the teacher said, bring out one per sheet of paper, one, two, three, and then pass, pass it up. And I always get zero. I'm prepared, brothers and sisters. I never study. I always unprepared. I never forget those days when I'm in high school. And so, today, it keeps unringing my brain. Judgment day is coming. Let the Bible speak by itself. At one, at this one, I check it out. Cross references with all about. The book of Mark Finley, and I take this excerpt, if you know, from Rebuen Adventist Herald. It's not my word. And also in the book, which is, I'm not taking much on that reference, by Pastor Ruiz, the Hong Kong uh, uh, pastor before, a professor in Hong Kong at Seventh Adventist. But most in this excerpt is from Adventist Review. So I just tell you now. But before we go on, I want to read again one more time this text, which Apostle Paul said in Acts 17, verse 30 to, 30 to 31. It says, For he has in the past, God, in the past, it says, uh, just may use my uh, glasses. In the past, God overlooks us ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent, for he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice. By the man he has appointed, he has given a proof of his to all men by raising him from the dead. Very clear, brothers and sisters. Judgment day is coming. It's not a threat. It's a promise, by the way. I still remember the day when I went to the law court in Vancouver. Twice, I went to the law court in Vancouver. The first time, I won the case. Okay? But the second time, no. 
As I'm inside the courtroom and observe what's going on, I thought, maybe they are waiting. There's a lot of people, maybe they're waiting for their verdict. There's a lot of people sitting in the benches inside the courtroom. And finally, the court in session, as the judge entered the courtroom and sit down, we all stand, then have a seat. And finally, the, the, the judge called our names one by one. You have to go into the front of the judge. And then he asked you to raise your right hand. And then he said that you make an oath. Do you solemnly swear? He says, do you solemnly swear that you will tell the truth and nothing but the truth? And then you help me, God. And then he will read your case. Then the judge states, guilty or not guilty? This is the moment you have to decide. You feel different. You feel strange. And in a second, you have to tell the truth, of course. And I said, guilty, your honor. The evidence is very strong because the officer is there besides. <laughs> so, guilty, your honor. The judge will then give the final decision, the verdict. Then he found his gavel, you know, the, like a hammer, like that. It's a sad day for me. It's not a good feeling. As I got out in the courtroom, you know, the, the lesson here in this one is that if you um, acknowledge right away that you are guilty, the judge will lessen your, uh, your uh, fine. But if you fight for it and argument will go on, you have to pay the full price. So, uh, because I lost, I know that I lost. So I said, guilty, your honor. And they reduced my penalty to at least half of it. Can you imagine you're going to pay $175 for your ticket? <laughs> That's too much. <laughs> That's why, pag may katwiran, ipaglaban mo. But this one, I can't. The evidence is very strong. I acknowledge I'm guilty. Because I violated a traffic rules. And I said to myself, yes, I admitted I'm not good enough. What I've done is wrong. Brothers and sisters, as we reflect, this is no comparison when the judgment day of the Lord is come. So the question for us is that when will be that day? And the other question is what are we going to do now to prepare ourselves on the judgment day? Remember, everyone, there's no exception. Everyone, even the dead, will rise from their, from their grave to receive their final judgment. God will give them life and everyone receive what is due for them. So everyone will be summoned that day. As Apostle Paul in his journey going to places, he just came from Thessalonica. Too much trouble in Thessalonica. If you read, you can follow that in Acts chapter 16. Too much trouble in Thessalonica as he preached the gospel because of those jealous uh, Jews. As he preaching, Jesus Christ is raised from the dead, and now like this, he's going on and on and on, the one that you crucified. So the Jews are very jealous, so they go and make trouble. Because Paul is very bold to preach the gospel, especially Jesus is alive. So too much trouble in Thessalonica as he preached the gospel. So in the night, Paul and Silas moved to Berea. They accepted them there. But then the Jews followed them and agitate the people. So Paul immediately left, brought, immediately left and brought to Athens. Timothy and Silas joined him later. Now in Acts chapter 16, if you follow the story, as Apostle Paul 
waiting there in Athens, he looked around. He observed everything. The people, the culture, the buildings, the monuments they erected. But the one caught his eyes is that too much idols around the city. So much idols. So the Apostle Paul is standing on the rocky hill opposite to Acropolis in Athens. Among the crowd gathered to hear what he says are philosophers and passers-by, eager to catch any new intriguing information. Paul began to talk about religious practices. He observed the city and points to the one true God. Of course, because they are worshipping idols, what's for the idols that erected? Of course, these are the worshipping. And so, Paul corrected them, what they are practicing in their, religious, in, their religious, in their faith. So he points them to the one true God. The maker of heaven and earth, the source of life for all. He brings the, the address to a final conclusion with a warning. Judgment day is coming. Brand sisters, it is a message that rings throughout the Bible. God, the moral arbiter of the universe, will call men and women to account. No one can escape. No one can hide. People may try to deny it, try to block it from the, the consciousness, from their consciousness. But the fact remains, judgment day is coming. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That each one may receive what is due for him for the things he has done. While in the, bo while, while in the body, it's for the things he has done. While in the body, whether good or bad, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. For with the fire and with the, his sword, the Lord will execute judgment upon all men, and many will be slain by the Lord. You can find that in Isaiah chapter 66, verse 16. Even Jesus, who loved so much about love of the Father, also thought that judgment day is coming. He says, but I tell you that men will have to give account on the day of judgment for every careless word they have spoken. You can find that in Matthew 12, verse 36. So even Jesus is talking about love and love about the fathers. He's talking also about judgment. Judgment day. In our society today, brothers and sisters, in this present world, injustice abound. Very often, the people, the, the poor, do not receive fair justice, while those people around that can afford high, high-priced lawyers, they can go free. We live in an age where so much violence, crimes, and injustice, evil seemingly goes unchecked. Bad things never stop when all these things be seized. Yes, it's true, brothers and sisters, especially in third world country, Philippines. The rich, they can go free. They can do another crime. Was they saying that the laws is that is good, it's only for the, for the rich people. How about the poor? Of course, they always jail them, innocent, injustice. And so much crime. But when going to be stopped all this? When they have this fair trial to be judged them? My sisters, remember the promise of the Lord. He tells all humankind, judgment day is coming, evil will not go on forever. Justice will, justice will not continue to be denied. God will take matters hand. In hand, he will call humankind into account. Think what happened to the flood. 
Noah preaching there for 120 years. God gave them a probation of 120 years period to prepare themselves to go inside the ark. Otherwise, you'll be perished. You will be drowned. Come that day. Did they listen? No. It's only the family of Noah. How about the Sodom and Gomorrah? Sodom and Gomorrah, but, uh, Abraham intervened to the Lord that if he can find 50 until down to almost nothing. That judgment day of Sodom and Gomorrah, no one is stopped. They all died because of the sulfur, sulfur fire come from heaven. So the question is, when earthly come, the question is, when is that? When will it happen? Earthly courts, they send you a notice. Yes, brothers and sisters. They send you a notice to appear in front of the judge. I received the notice, so I went in front of the judge. They summoned me. So you, have, so you know it. But here you don't know. The only answer is to stand firm in your faith. Sometimes we have this struggle when we experience unfairness in our lives. Just like the passage in Psalm 73. If you read in the Psalm 73, this is the passage. The psalmist acknowledges his struggles as he sees how those people reject God seems to prosper. People who give no attention to God seems to enjoy life healthy, carefree, wealthy, proud, and arrogant. Yes. I don't know. Sometimes I've been faithful for a long, long time. I'm still like this. But those people doesn't know God. Seems like they are so good. They don't have nothing to lose. They're okay. You can read that in Psalm 73, verse 12, verse, verse 4 to 12. They say, how can God know the most high have knowledge? In verse 11, it is a troubled question to the psalmist. For us also in verse 17, till I entered the sanctuary of God, then I understood their final destiny. Brothers and sisters, that God assures us that he was alive and well. God was still on the throne in his own time and ways. He would call to stop the reign of sin. He would call to stop evil. God will make everything right. For us, the heavenly sanctuary where Jesus ministers as our great high priest give us the assurance this world will not go on forever. As Seventh-day Adventist, believe in prophecy. The longest prophecy in the Bible is the 2,300 days. In Daniel it says, on 2,300 days, then the sanctuary be cleansed. We believe in one day is equal to a year. So on 2,300 years, then the sanctuary be cleansed. And it is start from 457 BC when King Artaxerxes of Persia made a decree to rebuild the Jerusalem. To 1844 AD, make it correct, because lots of people before, what is AD? They say, after death. No, my sisters, if you don't know, Anu Domini, it means the year of the Lord. Okay, in the year of the Lord, 1844, in the year of the Lord, Anu Domini, A.D. And that's the period, okay, of that the sanctuary be cleansed from 47 B.C. to 1844 A.D. We believe that 1844 A.D., Jesus, our high priest, undertook the last phase of ministry in heaven. He's in the he his heaven for his last phase of his heavenly ministry. 
which call this what? The investigative judgment. Right now, brothers and sisters, we are investigated every day what we're doing. They, God, Jesus Christ, as He's in His throne in the mercy seat, He's writing you what your activity in your life every day. Okay? If you are bad today, it's in the record. If you make a crime today, it's in the record. In our book of life. And that's what He's doing. We call this investigative judgment. For those who doesn't know still about this prophecy, just approach us later and uh, make you, uh, give you a study, okay? For those who doesn't know about this prophecy. Because it's a little bit crucial to understand. When Jesus Christ entered in the most holy place, working in our behalf, interceding to the Father, he gives us the assurance to be saved in the judgment day. He is the mediator of man and God because we cannot go and approach God. He is only the one to give us the mediator in between man and God. Jesus Christ is in the heavenly sanctuary interceding to the Father and He gives us now the assurance and hope to be saved in the judgment day. And I read, it says in 14, in Revelation in chapter 14, verse 6 and 7, Then I saw another angel flying in midair, and he had eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. He said in a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. For he worship him who made the heavens, the earth, and the sea, and the spring of waters. That one is ringing, and that one is proclaiming since 1844, brothers and sisters, because the judgment are come. Let's go back to Apostle Paul in the book of Acts, chapter 16. After explaining that the true God who made the heaven and earth whom you worship, not those unknown God, idols, he challenged his audience. He challenged them. To those people, listen to him. Repent, fear, fear God, and give glory. Repent, the hour of judgment has come. This is what Apostle Paul is preaching in Athens. Can you imagine the time? Brothers and sisters, Apostle Paul spoke of God setting a day when he will judge the world with justice. We preach, share the good news, repent and ask forgiveness, turn away from your wicked ways, and back to God. Jesus Christ, our high priest, is still waiting for us patiently to surrender our life to him. Yes, brothers and sisters, how good is God like that? He gives us so many times, so many chances to fully surrender our life to him. <coughs> and finally, Apostle Paul stated that God will judge the world by the man whom he appointed, the, the, the one whom he raised from the dead, Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, as a Christian, Seventh Adventist believers, this is the message that we tell to the world and centers in Jesus. It is eternal gospel, the good news. We should be, this should be the one, we should be the one in the forefront to tell the world. You know, I bothered sometimes when I saw other uh, religion. And I saw in my Facebook page, once in a while I check my Facebook page, not always. And it says, very bold. Those are my cousins, by the way, they put there. Darating na ang paghukom. In other denominations, they put in that. What about us? This should be the one that we always foremost to tell the world that Jesus 
is coming so prepare for the judgment day. This should be so that we will go home, brothers and sisters. I'm so tired, really. But other comment says, ah, oh, because we're not doing our work. That's why we're still here. Because God is so patient to wait for us. Not everyone will be perished. Yes, also, it's a blessing. He speed up the work so that we all go home. Can you imagine? 50 years now that you are seven Adventists, and later on you stumble and fall. How sad. Right. It's so hard that you invest a lot of time in going come to the church and sit down in the pew. And then later on, there is a trial that you cannot overcome. You lost, brothers and sisters. In the book of record in your life, it's very clear that God is a fair, uh, a trial, just a judge. Make sure that is. Stand firm in your faith while there's a time. He is the only one who wrote our salvation, Jesus, and who is soon to come again. He is the one who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the spring of water. And in John 1, 3 says, Because through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has, made, has been made. We should live Jesus Christ every time. So very clear, but he said, It is Jesus Christ our judge. The decision of heaven's court will forever seal its person's destiny. The verdict will be irrevocable. You have to remember that. It's final. For there's no higher court of appeal. That when you lost your case in her, in earth, in here, you still have a uh, chance to win, your, to win your case. If there's a fair and if you, if you feel that you are not get, get a fair trial, you can appeal to the higher court. They call it court, court of appeal. But in here, there's no court of appeal. It's already over. It's final. And the decision of the Lord is irrevocable. If you are bad, your sins still reign in your heart, in your life, it's too late. You will be lost. But if you are good, you ask forgiveness and totally surrender your life to Jesus. His righteousness transform you into his likeness. You will be saved in the judgment day. Brothers and sisters, when the work of the investigative judgment closed, our destiny has been decided for life or death. Our probation period is closed. The question also here is that how about we cannot make it to the following day and we're still clinging into that sin. Investigation is done for you. And the probation is done. It is ended. But when our probation is period is closed, it is ended a short time before the appearing of the Lord in the clouds of heaven. Christ said in Revelation, He that is unjust, and I will read. He that is in Revelation 22, 11, He that is unjust, let him be unjust. Still, and he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Behold, I am coming soon. My reward is with me. And I will give to everyone according to what he has done. Brothers and sisters, that time, even people, they're still alive. Those people that holy, they become so holy. And those people that bad, they become so, so bad. We believe also on this one, but I did not include in my message. This is now, they call it sealing time. It's you already sealed, right? You are chosen now to be saved. But in that moment, in not, in not, not too long now, Jesus will come. In here, Jesus 
ended his work in the most holy place, no more mediator between you and God. That's why this is very crucial, my sisters, that when you are in that situation, and when Jesus is stepped down on his throne in the most holy place, as you can look also in the earthly sanctuary, when the, when the, the high priest is go out now in the most holy place, and pray for his people, the Israelite people. Same thing with Jesus when he stepped down in the most holy place and come now as a judge. No, no more can intervene you, no more can intercede in you for your sin to be washed, to forgive, because there's no more mediator between man and God. It's over. His job is done. His work is done as a mediator. So sorry for you. You are already sealed and you're waiting for your verdict in the final judgment. In short while, he is coming in the clouds of heaven and his reward will be with him to give every man, women, as his work shall be. Brothers and sisters, in the judgment, the crucial issue involves our relationship with Jesus. We cannot save ourselves no matter how hard we try. When our name comes up in the heavenly courts with an erring record of our life laid bare, all that we have done and failed to do, the question is what we have done with God's Son. In John chapter 3 verse 17, 18, it says, for God did not send his son to the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God, one and only son. We have to believe in him. We have faith in him. He, we love in him. We should love him and follow him throughout of our lives. The heavenly record of our lives, while it cannot provide hope, but it is important, brothers and sisters, because it shows the direction of our lives. Yes. That's why it's a fair trial. You cannot get that in this earth. But you can get a fair trial in heaven. We are weak and erring. We try, but we, we fall and fall again. So the question, so back to the question a while ago, brothers and sisters, what are we going to do now? How do we prepare ourselves in the judgment day? You know what? As I'm anticipating that day when I'm going to the court, in Vancouver court, uh, law court, my co-worker said, uh, I'm not coming tomorrow because I'm going to the law court. And they said, again? I think you just went last two years ago. <laughs> and I said, yes. What did you do again? Well, the police said that I make a U-turn in a double solid yellow. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I'm in a hurry that day. So, uh, but, so why, how come that you still went to the court? Because that's totally a violation, a traffic violation. Uh, you never know, man. Probably, maybe, but uh, it's okay. So I prepare myself, and when I'm going to the top, I'm ashamed, really. I, I really ashamed myself that I cannot even look at other people because I know that I'm guilty already. But the only thing that matters to me is that you have to accept, brothers and sisters. If you did something, accept at least. It gives you a little bit, you know, sense of pride if you have that. That... Yes, I accept it. So, less guilty a little bit. And I prepare myself. Yes, it's hard. In front of the judge and make a swear. Our God, brothers and sisters, for his love and mercy. Our God. He's so merciful and loving. He gives us the grace of Jesus to transform us. That's the key, brothers and sisters. Even how... how 
how red your sin is, even how bad your, your sin is. But the grace of God, Jesus Christ, transform you. We will become changed as we walk with Jesus, giving ourselves to him each day, feeding on his word and seeking to live for his glory. We become like him. And I want to read that in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Verse 18. But we all unveiled face, beholding as in mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. That's the key, brothers and sisters. As we look Jesus every day and feeding on His Word, this body that so much Sin. Every time as I look at Jesus and read this word, you will be changed and transformed by the grace of God. So many people are afraid in the judgment day. They, they, they live in doubt that they will not be found good enough to be admitted in heaven. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you. Yes, you are not good enough. You never make it on your own. But Jesus is good enough for you and me. If you have taken him, your personal Savior and Lord, he is stand in your place. we almost done. He is stand in your place. The Father sees only his Son. Okay? Perfect righteousness. So, the Father only saw his Son because he covered you in his righteousness. He cannot see your spotty record anymore in your life. Brothers and sisters, it's not yet too late. But the time now is short. We are living in the last days. We are closer than before. Our Lord is coming soon. He is still waiting patiently for us. Ministering in our behalf so that Everyone will be saved. As in Hebrew 4.16, it says, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a, high, have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses. But we, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet did not sin. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace in time of our need. Brothers and sisters, very clear that the time is now to approach the throne of grace. We always should be every day we approach the throne of grace. When we fall, we approach the throne of grace so that we have a clear conscience. We are clean. We are forgiven. We will always be ready. As I close, it is our privilege to trust in the love of Jesus for our salvation. In the fullest, surest manner, He loves me, He received me, I will trust in Him, for He gave me His life for me. Testimonies of the Ministers, page 517. How wonderful our God. And it's certain that God's throne in heaven is a throne of grace. Grace is our only living hope, brothers and sisters. Grace is our salvation. Brothers and sisters, the good news indeed. Judgment day is coming. Let us all prepare and be ready. Thank you. Let's all stand for our closing hymn.
Heavenly Father, it's our desires to be with you forever. But, oh God, so many temptations and trials as we face this, in this world. And as we can see and as we live, there's a time that we fall. So many times we fall, oh God. But thank you, Heavenly Father, for the grace that you give us freely. Yes, oh Lord, we are weak and nothing. But help us to understand about your love, about your grace, so that we will be faithful up to the end. Heavenly Father, it's my prayer that all of us in this room and to our loved ones that they go already in the grave, and to those, our extended loved ones, wherever they are, and all the people that we meet and everyone, that we share the good news, the gospel of Jesus, that is coming soon and his judgment to everyone. Yes, O oh God, we can stand firm in our faith so that we will not be lost in that day. Come, Jesus, come into our hearts today. In Jesus' name, amen.